Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion, our discussion uh, regarding uh, double Lightroom. So this is the second part of Lightroom tutorial. So uh, I'm going to discuss some of some other tools here. So we have the uh, spot removal tool, the red eye correction, and the adjustment brush. So these are some of the tools that get, that is useful here in Lightroom. Okay, so let's start first with the red eye correction. So let's click on this image or photo. Okay, you can zoom in by pressing Ctrl plus. Okay, so you can scroll. So basically, we're, we're going to use the red eye correction to remove a red eye effect every time you take a photo. So basically, this happens if you have a, a single flash. So basically, the eye is not yet prepared for a particular bright light. So it produces a red light upon uh, receiving a uh, receiving a uh, burst of light, a uh, uh, burst of light in front of the eye. So uh, that's why it happens on photos. Just uh, um, uh, for modern modern cameras. So uh, as you can uh, observe that uh, more modern cameras always uh, flashes twice so it flashes first then uh, again uh, it poses and flashes again so the purpose of that one is that it uh, it makes the eye prepared so once you uh, click flash so the red eye pigment will appear and once you uh, once, it, once it flashes again so basically well, uh, well, any red eye, uh, well, any red eye effect. Okay. So, but if if in case there is still a red eye effect on the, on on your photo, you can still use the you can use the red eye correction here. Okay. All you have to do is click click the red eye correction uh, tool. Then you can draw. Okay. So as much as possible, uh, you select portion of the eye okay so same also on uh, this one okay you can click and drag okay so it reduces so it reduces the red eye effect on on your photo if you're done just click done okay so that is the purpose of the red eye correction Okay, next is we're going to use the spot healing or the spot removal tool. Okay, so from the word itself, so it means that you're going to remove spots on photos. So just like in the photo, you have uh, different spots here. So we're going to use the spot removal tool. So all you have to do is, you can still, you can still resize the control. Uh, the square bracket you can use the square bracket to resize to increase or decrease the size of the of the tool okay so what what you're going to do is just brush from outside of the spot going in going to it okay automatically it will Automatically, it will uh, clear the spots. Okay, let's do the same thing here. And just click or drag. Okay, so for our next tool, we're going to use the adjustment brush. So if you have the graduated filter and the radial filter, so we have the adjustment brush. So this is used for, for manually selecting portion which you need to modify or you need to enhance. Okay, if the, gradu the, the uh, graduated filter is for linear adjustments and the radial filter are for, is for circular adjustments, so the brush is uh, gives you the uh, flexibility of selecting portion of the photo which you need to adjust. Okay, so let's start. So let's say for example, I'm going to zoom in. 
okay we're going to for, uh, for example we're going to just we're going to adjust the highlights of the hair so since it's a little bit red so we're going to uh, select that portion using the adjustment brush so click on the adjustment brush okay so I can always always use the square bracket to reduce or resize the adjustment brush size okay so then select the portion which you need to adjust so let's say this one okay so as you can see you have you have added pin here so that is the that pin is your first adjustment brush selection so you can always click the show selected mask overlay or you can uh, check uh, the checkbox here okay so that you can see uh, the portion being selected okay so the red portion here is the portion selected so that is the portion which which will be modified uh, with the adjustments on the ad adjustments on the right side okay so you can uncheck the show selected mask overlay okay for you to uh to see the effect of the adjustment so let's say for example we're going to change the temperature okay let's uh, change the tint let's make it a little bit uh a little bit uh uh, uh more reddish Okay, the exposure then the contrast highlights shadows and clarity saturation Okay, let's, uh, uh, if you're done, just click done. Then you can always see the before and after. Okay, you can always go back, just click the adjustment brush, then click the pin. Okay, and, uh, you can check the show selected mask overlay to see what's being selected so since this is an existing pin you can always change this one modify this one if you want okay if you're done just click done next is still we're going to use the adjustment brush so if as you can see on the photo so the woman still have blemishes on his on her face so uh, uh, we're going to use a, a simple technique for you to be able to reduce the blemishes of the skin. So basically, uh, we're going to use the adjustment brush again. Okay, so this time we're going to uh, select the face. So this is the technique, a trick for you to be able to reduce the uh, some blemishes on the skin. Okay, let's select the entire portion of the of the of the head. Okay, so if you're going to check the show selected uh, mask overlay, so we're going to we're going to soften a little bit. Uh, we're going to soften the skin a little bit. So using the adjustment brush, so let's adjust the exposure because it adds plus one. So let's reduce it to the normal value. Okay. So this time we're going to use the clarity so this is uh helpful helpful in adjusting uh some blemishes on the skin so we can just use the clarity and just adjust it to the left okay okay so don't worry if the eyes and the other parts of the face uh smoothens also so it may not look good if, especially if we're going to apply multiple times of 
uh, of clarity, of uh, lessening the clarity, uh, we're going to reverse the process on those parts. Okay, so uh, we can still do add another adjustment brush. So click done, then uh, use the adjustment brush again. So select the entire face again. Okay, so it's just like we're applying uh, smoothness for the second time. Okay, so we already have three pins here. So this is the latest uh, pin for our adjustment brush. Okay, the same area, but this time, uh, but still, uh, we're going to do the same thing. Let's descend the exposure, then use the clarity. Okay, if you want, you can uh, adjust the contrast, highlights, the shadows. Okay. If you're done, just click done. Okay, so since we applied uh, smoothness for uh, twice on the face, so the problem is some of the areas, that, like the eyes and the nose and the lips, still uh, 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 is also applied with smoothness. So we're going to reverse the process for you to make it uh, to make the photo more uh, more realistic. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to st still use the adjustment brush, but, th but this time we're going to uh, select the portion which need to be sharp, like the eyebrows, eyes, nose, nose line, and the uh, lips. Okay, so let's select those parts. Okay, if you want, you can also select the, the edges of the chin. The neck color. Okay. So because those parts will be reciprocated uh, with the process. If we smoothen the entire face uh, twice uh, previously, so this time we're going to sharpen it. Okay, so this is the portion being selected. Okay, goes to the adjustment, make the exposure zero. Okay, then this time uh, the clarity should be. Uh, we're going to add clarity. So if previously we sharp we smoothen it by uh, uh, lessening the clarity value. So this time we're going to. Uh, adjust it we're going to add a clarity value so let's uh, move the adjust the uh, adjustment slider uh, to the right okay might be uh so as you can see uh those part which is being uh which has been selected using the adjustment brush sharpens okay click done Okay, so next is as you can see, the teeth is a little bit yellowish, so we're going to reduce the teeth color. So use the adjustment brush, then select the portion of the teeth. Okay, so this is the portion being selected. So the teeth portion is the portion being selected. Okay. So this is the portion that is being selected. So again, the exposure, let's uh, move it to zero because uh, it automatically adds uh, plus one. Okay. So this time we're going to uh, reduce the saturation. And to make it a little bit whiter. 
Then the clarity. Okay, click done. Okay. So we're going to uh, make the lips a little bit reddish. So use the adjustment brush, then select the portion of the lips. Okay, so this is the portion being selected. Let's reduce the exposure again. Let's bring it to zero. Then let's adjust the saturation. Okay, click done if you're done. Go back to the photo. Then look for the before and after. Okay, so those are the simple technique uh, using adjustment brush to reduce some blemishes on the skin. Okay, so we're done with uh, photo enhancement. So uh, let's say, for example, if especially for photographers, so most some of uh, of their photos needs to have a watermark. So basically, uh, there is a technique wherein that you can add watermark. Uh, in uh, in Lightroom, so we're going to uh, add watermark in Lightroom. So, but there's uh, there's two type of watermark that you can use in Lightroom. So the first type is uh, is the text, and the other one is the photo. You can add your you can create your own photo and add it as a watermark to do the final output of your or final photos in your uh, in your Lightroom files. And the other one is a text. Uh, you can use a plain text as a watermark to your photos. Okay, you can do that by clicking on the ed edit. Then edit watermark. Okay. So the first uh, what watermark style is the text. Okay. So you can, uh, let's say for example, you can just uh, type a text. For example, multimedia. Okay, so that is a simple text. You can change the the fonts, the for the color. If you want, then the opacity, the offset, the sh the offset or the shadow. Okay, so we have the horizontal inset or the alignment uh, vertically and horizontally. So the anchor or the location of the watermark. Okay, so if you're done, you can click save or you can create your, uh, your new preset or your new watermark preset. So just click save current settings. So let's say for example, this will be a sample watermark text. Okay. So that it, uh, for you to be able to easily select a particular watermark and apply it on the photo. Just click create. Then done. Okay. Uh, for you to be able to apply the watermark, so you need to export the photo. So just right click, export, then export. Okay, so we have the uh, the path, the Lightroom export folder. So scroll down, then you can you have the watermarking uh, checkbox here. Just click watermark. Okay, so if you're going to click the drop down. The watermark that you uh, you saved earlier will, will be on the selection. So just click sample, sample watermark text or the 
previously created watermark uh, preset, then click export. Okay, so once exported, so this is the output. Okay, so as you can see, you have the watermark that you did, yeah, that you used uh, in Lightroom. Okay, so aside from text, you can also use uh, a photo. You can also use a photo for you to be able to use to use it as a watermark. But always remember, uh, you can you uh, the background the the file should be on PNG that PNG, so that the uh, so that the background should be transparent. Okay. So if not, if that is not a PM, PNG uh, format, so what happens here is that you're going to have a square watermark or a square watermark uh, photo. Okay, so I, I, had, I already have this sample. So this is in PNG. So every, uh, the background is uh, in transparent. So I'm going to go back to Lightroom again. So I'm going to apply it on other photo. Okay, let's say on the first photo here. So go to edit, edit watermark. Then this time I'm going to choose graphic. Select the graphic or the PNG file, the, the sample that I did. This is a James watermark uh, PNG. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the initial location is on the lower left corner of the photo. So you can adjust it. Same as what you did in the text watermark. They say I'm going to uh, place it on the upper right. Okay, let's do the horizontal and uh, vertical inset. So we're going to adjust the proportionality. Okay. Going to adjust the opacity. Let's lighten it a bit. Okay. So I can click save, but if I but I want to save it as a new preset, click the drop down again, save current settings as new preset, then assign a, a preset name. Let's say uh, sample water mark photo preset. Then click create. Okay. So if the position and the appearance of the watermark is uh, is fine, so just click done. Okay, so then we're going to apply it on this photo. Right click, then export, export, then scroll down, check the watermark checkbox. So this time we're going to use the other preset, the photo, the sample water, watermark photo. Then click export. Okay. So let's check on the uh, exported file. So this is the exported file with the watermark on the upper right corner. Okay. So this is the, uh, the uh, photo watermark. And make sure that it is on a PNG format so that uh, the background is transparent. Okay? So, that will be all for the discussion of Lightroom. So, this is the, the those are the basics of uh, Adobe Lightroom. So, that's how you enhance and manipulate photos in Lightroom and add watermark.